The one thing that we can guarantee that every dictator has in common is that no dictator became a dictator overnight. I intend to show you in this video how Trump is morphing the United States into a dictatorship. As I said before, dictators do not become dictators overnight. They'll start to do subtle things like consolidate power. Jarvanka are the epitome of meritless, but they're influencing policy solely because of nepotism. They claim we're not paying for Jarvanka to be in the White House, but the question remains, what the hell are they still doing there? Or how about Fredo Jr. and Fredo III, who are using taxpayers' money for their luxuries, travel expenses, and to advance Trump organization interests? Now that we know that Jarvanka and the Fredo twins are using our money for their own personal enrichment, the question remains, when do we turn off the ATM? Ugh, I digress. George Orwell said in 1984 that what an autocrat does is try to control the information that goes out to the masses. That's exactly what Trump is doing. Any media outlet or newspaper that has criticized Trump, he has either threatened them or called them fake news over and over and over again. However, numerous times when he claimed that it was fake news, he was actually lying. For example, Rex Tillerson, Gary Cohn, Priebus, Mattis, they are all no longer working at the White House. He is allegedly the President of the United States, but he won't allow you to criticize him on Twitter. He'll block you if you criticize him. He will tell you that you didn't actually hear what you heard him say. Or he'll insult you or cut you off if you try to push him to explain what he said or what he did. You said that the leaks are real, but the news is fake. I guess I don't understand. Uh, it seems that there's a disconnect there. If the information coming from those leaks is real, then how can the stories be no, fake? No, the reporting is fake. And if I look, ask, look, I just want to ask Jim, you know what it is? Here, here's the thing. The public isn't, you know, they read newspapers, they see television, they watch. They don't know if it's true or false. Why not just say it's a story I don't like? I do that. call it fake news, no, you're I do that. undermining confidence no, no. in our news that. media. Here, here's the thing. In addition to not answering questions, he's not accountable to the United States. When asked about decisions that affect all of us in this country, he'll say, we'll see. He refuses to do press conferences and the media hasn't held him accountable. It's been a long time since he's had to answer any questions. It's not just not answering questions. Typical dictators usually gravitate towards media that's favorable towards them. Dictators will also threaten their adversaries or their detractors. How many times have you heard Donald Trump threatening or insulting Hillary Clinton? He's asked for people in the Obama administration to be investigated. He's gone after James Comey. He's gone after McCabe. He's gone after Sessions. He's gone after Rosenstein. He's gone after Mueller. He's gone after anyone that he believes is a threat to him or who is his adversary. The thing is, Trump's conduct is not dissimilar to most dictators. Most dictators threaten or punish their detractors. Kim Jong-un, the man Trump is talking about having a summit with, killed his half-brother. This reporter and his lawyer were killed because they were critics of Putin. This Russian journalist was critical of Putin. She was also killed. Dictators or those prone to be dictators, they usually praise other dictators. Trump praised the Chinese president for essentially becoming the dictator for life. He's praised Saddam Hussein. He's praised Kim Jong-un. He's praised Putin. He's praised Duarte. He's praised so many dictators. Ever wonder why? He uses his power to award corporate backers. He'll use the exact same power that he uses to award corporate backers to punish corporate opponents. He bullied the NFL to force their players to stand for the national anthem. And the NFL, in their cowardice, they agreed. In addition to all their other madness, they must always have an enemy. There must always be someone or some group that you can blame for your problems. 
They want you to be afraid, constantly afraid, so that you believe that only they are the people that are gonna keep you safe. I alone can fix it. For example, Hitler chose the Jews and he blamed them for Germany's problems. Trump has chosen Muslims and immigrants and he's blamed them for this country's problems. Donald J. Trump is calling for a total and complete shutdown of Muslims entering the United States until our country's representatives can figure out what the hell is going on. To add insult to injury, he's virtually rendered Congress powerless. Congress is no longer a separate and equal branch of government. It's just Trump's Congress. He stacked the courts with quacks and charlatans only to ensure himself insulation from any real accountability. He uses his office for personal enrichment and for his luxuries. He has decimated governmental positions by refusing to fill them, thereby shrinking the government, leaving it really just up to him. He undermines every institution from the FBI to the DOJ to the CIA and every institution that threatens to abide by constitutional principles. After everything you just heard, what would you call Trump? Wouldn't you call him a dictator? When you have a dangerously unbalanced imposter in the White House who exhibits characteristics of a dictator, it must be at the forefront of our consciousness in a democratic society. Democracy isn't immutable and it's not a spectator sport. It requires compliance by the people and engagement by the people for it to be effective. So if you're not engaged now, you need to get engaged. The 2018 midterm elections are the most important and most critical election of our lifetime. Get involved right now. We need to make sure that we restore democracy. And remember, none of this is normal.